All right, so what I want you to do at this point is try these six on your own. Uh, press pause if you haven't already done so, and I will give you the answers uh, one at a time. So the answer for this one is C H three C N. So as you can see, oh, that's a lot of C's. Uh, as you can tell over here, the formula has been spread out in order to give you a hint on what the structure looks like. C C H three H three C and then an N at the end. All right, give this one a try. And the answer is over here. So C H two H two C H C H C H C H then an O at the end. And the only way to keep everyone stable would be to have double bonds here and here. So let's take a look at it. Two four six eight two four six eight two four six eight. You know what, this one's pretty hard to visualize, so I'm going to show you the Lewis diagram so you know where all the electrons came from. So as you can see, uh, this C over here has four valence electrons that belong to it, but it's gained one, two, three, four, so it has a total of eight over here. This carbon also has four electrons to, uh, from it, so I haven't added or subtracted any electrons because each carbon gets four, and because it's shared with this hydrogen, shared with this carbon and this carbon, it does get eight, two, four, six, eight. Same thing over here, one, two, three, four, the electro original electrons that belong to this carbon, and then as you add on the other ox uh, the electrons, you get two, four, six, eight. Oxygen has six valence electrons originally, these two, four, six, because it gains these ones from here, or shares them rather, you have four, and four, which add up to eight altogether. So if you're not comfortable drawing the line diagrams, feel free to draw the Lewis dot diagrams. Those are also fine. Uh, this will help you to keep track of whose electrons belong to where, uh, where did they come from, did I have any extra ones that don't belong there, or am I missing some? Uh, everything is, or rather can be held accountable when you draw a Lewis dot diagram. The only reason why we draw the line diagram is just to simplify things. Next question, and the answer is C H three C H three C H two C H two bond to a bromine bromine because bromine should have only seven valence electrons because it's in group seven A and because it has seven valence electrons it needs one more to achieve stability so it can only make one bond and there's that one bond. All right, next question. And the answer is C H three C H three N N bonded to two H's two H's. Let's double check. Does this carbon have uh, eight valence electrons? Yes, two, four, six, eight. Does this nitron uh, nitrogen have uh, eight valence electrons? Yes, two, four, six, as well as the lone pair of electrons, because nitrogen is supposed to have five valence electrons. If you remember, nitrogen is in group 5A, so 5 valence electrons, meaning that it needs another 3 electrons to bond with it to achieve the full stable structure. And that is what I've given it. 3 bonds and the 2 valence electrons over there, lone pair of electrons. Alright, second last one. And the answer is, there we go, CH3, CH3, N bonded next, bonded to an H, bond to a C, and then bond to three H's. Alright, last one. And the answer is N with its two lone pair of electrons, bonded to two H's, one here, one here, bond to a C, which is then bonded to an O, which is then bonded to a C, and three H's. Double check. One, two, three bonds for the nitrogen. One, two, three, four bonds for the carbon two bonds for the oxygen, that's good. Oh wait, I've got to draw the lone pair of electrons for the oxygen, forgot about those. So two, four, six, eight, and then two, four, six, eight, four bonds for the carbon. 